what can be the medical issues that they can one can face with addictive consumption of alcohol so we will stick to alcohol and i'll repeat my question what can be the medical issues one can face with addictive com- consumption of alcohol i think you've taken a good example because it probably has the widest spectrum of mm. comorbidity development uh, among all the drugs which are being used commonly in society today so we will look at it from top down alcohol is ingested mm. drunk so it affects the entire pathway of the gastrointestinal tract alcohol by itself burns if you take some pure alcohol and just drop a little bit on your skin mm-hmm. you immediately feel cool in that spot the reason for it is actually physical in nature because it is burning and the air around has an effect on the burn you feel cool this is a physical phenomenon but the pathology is the burn so yes. from the time it enters your mouth and goes through your gullet your esophagus into your stomach your small intestines large intestines till the passage out it creates an irritation and the irritation can lead to various levels it can lead to inflammation a gastritis esophagitis in people who are chronic abusers who do not uh, have an appropriate diet management and healthcare they even wind up with burning inside the mouth mouth and then this whole passage of burning goes down through the small intestine large intestine through the rectum up to the anus so the, the consequences of this burning comes as gastritis esophagitis uh, colitis proctitis and then further consequential development which i'll come to so burns the passage the second thing is that it gets absorbed from the intestine and goes into the liver mm-hmm. and creates a certain amount of havoc there and from there it gets exported through the venous system to the heart and then gets sent again to all the parts of the body so there are two circulations one is the enterohepatic circulation and the other is the cardiac circulation so in the enterohepatic circulation when alcohol goes to the liver it challenges the liver cells to do something with me do no. something with me <laughs> because otherwise i'm going to burn you nature has designed that we should be able to digest alcohol mm. we have enzymes for it alcohol dehydrogenase is an enzyme in the liver it works by breaking down the alcohol molecule but this is based on the design that through the process of fermentation in the gut alcohol is produced but not more than 14% alcohol mm. so when you have more than 14% alcohol available or circulating then the liver is challenged to do a job and over a period of time it starts failing and the consequences of the burn starts happening in the liver tissue this leads to hepatitis it may be acute or chronic and then as chronic hepatitis continues over a period of time it leads to a condition called cirrhosis cirrhosis is a uh, easy to explain in uh, very lay terms just imagine you have a room nice mm-hmm. wonderful well built good surfaced walls everything and then we have the mumbai monsoons <clears throat> and then you have all sorts of damage occurring on the walls and then you call some builders they come and repair the walls put some plaster layering everything and then after some time you find those little lumps forming on those walls these are all damaged structures they are not the original so as a consequence of the inflammation little little nodules form in the liver and the liver starts shrinking becoming mm. small in size and the active portions of the livers which are the liver cells they die out other areas which are in the liver are meant for circulation and removal of bile they start getting blocked or the vessels get so dilated that they produce little spots called varices or piles yeah. normally one has heard of piles in the anal area rectum at the lower end of the intestine but you get piles in these sort of circulatory areas where there is a close connection between an artery and a vein and the big problem is most commonly you see it either in the liver or you see it in the esophagus and the big danger is that it may rupture and bleed 
and when it bleeds, it bleeds torrentially. And if it isn't treated on an emergent basis, sometimes surgically, the person will actually exsanguinate. They'll die due to the loss of the blood. So these are two primary conditions which are associated with the liver. The other thing is like in the early part of the alcohol moving down the gut to the small intestine, it also irritates the pancreas gland. Now I'm sure mm. you might have heard of the pancreas gland. It produces all the digestive juices. It also produces insulin. Mm. So over a period of time of the pancreas being inflamed and irritated, person starts developing digestive disorders. And over more time, if the cells which elaborate and release the insulin, if they get damaged, then these people start winding up with high blood sugar levels, which commonly we refer to as diabetes. And usually this is a secondary diabetes. And this becomes also a problem or part and parcel of their lives. They now become yeah. diabetics. Mm -hmm. Alcohol, because of its effect, increases the volume in circulation and people may become hypertensive. Alcohol by itself may be an irritant to the heart muscle and call, cause weakness of the heart muscle. In some patients, it may lead to heart failure. Further effects through the vascular system is that it may lead to more atherosclerosis. And atherosclerosis, we know, is a problem that may affect cause strokes in the brain or brain. may cause strokes in the heart also. People have heart attacks. Coronary artery disease may be also seen. Now we come to the real you know, let's say the king baby around here. This is the brain. Yes. It affects the brain. Now, mm. it affects the brain like an anesthetic. The brain has got two major areas. One is called the old brain and the other is the new brain. So the main bulk of the brain as we know it is the new brain. It is newly developed in humans. The old brain is meant for a vital function, staying alive, heart to beat, to breathe and to withdraw from danger. But the new brain is what makes us human. We think, we remember, we have emotions, we respond to our environment other than just protection. Mm. Alcohol starts suppressing this area of the brain. So when people say that the mood is elevated when they take a little alcohol, it's not because it is stimulating the brain. It is suppressing their inhibitions. So they feel better. But if they have more, it's going to damage more. Mm -hmm. At a blood concentration of less than 80 milligrams per deciliter, they're having a nice time. At 80 to 100 milligrams per deciliter, they start becoming a little noisy and rowdy and they'll become a little out of control. Mood changes. A, mood changes. 100 to 200, they are physically, functionally disabled. Mm -hmm. They cannot stand, they weave around. They can't walk straight, they can't handle moving machinery, and they are dangerous at this time. More than 200, their sensorium gets affected, they start getting doped out. This is usually the time when they have amnesia for the event. You might have heard people refer to, oh, I had a blackout. I had a real good party, but I had a blackout. I don't know what happened. They can't remember what happened at that time because that alcohol level had gone so high. And when the level crosses 300 or more, then there is a significant chance that they can die because of suppression of the respiratory system. Luckily, most people will vomit. Mm. And so the concentration may reduce, so much may not be absorbed. But technically speaking, that is the time in which they can die also. Chronic so alcohol abuse here yeah, is going to cause neuropathies. And people have tremors and things like that, and they cannot function very well. They can have sexual disabilities. Uh, initially, they may be physically active, but over chronic use, they may be interested in sexual activity, but they may not find themselves competent to complete a sexual act. Where women are concerned, they may find themselves to become infertile. You know, especially when they're heavy alcoholic use in their reproductive years, they may become infertile. Mm -hmm. And if they are heavily consuming alcohol while they are pregnant, they may even allow such things to be affecting the fetus. The fetus may wind up with something called the fetal alcohol syndrome. Mm. So there are many complex disorders and a detailed physical evaluation is required when, when you are examining people with a history of chronic alcohol use.